Foundation, now a Spanish charity ship taking 200 tonnes of food aid to Gaza, <coughs> is expected to arrive today, bringing some respite to the 2.4 million inhabitants that the UN says are at severe risk of famine. Mm. Among those trapped in Gaza are the family of Yusuf Al-Halu, who lost his sister and nieces and nephews when their house was bombed. He wants a new family visa scheme enabling Gazans with family in the UK to come here on a temporary basis until the end of the war. He joins us alongside Hannah Bardell, who is one of the British MPs backing the scheme. Hannah, we'll come to you in a second. But, Yusuf, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And I know we'll, we'll get on to the visa scheme in a minute, but, first of all, you live here now in, in Britain, but you have Palestinian heritage and you've got family members out there in Palestine. Just tell us what's... What's happened with your family? You, you lost your sister in December, is that right? That's right. It's devastating that innocent people are being killed indiscriminately. My sister and her uh, children, they were uh, killed uh, last December when an Israeli airstrike struck their home. Five-story building collapsed and they are still under the rubble until this moment. Their oh. bodies are decomposed. Your, your sister and their children are still under the rubble? Yes. How many children? Seven children in total. The, 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 the youngest was one month old. She was born during this genocidal war. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel angry, frustrated, that the world is allowing um, these atrocities to happen uh, for six months in a row. The world has to intervene. Uh, this genocide can end by one call from Biden himself. It's really heartbreaking. So... I mean, I, I think it's hard to even know how to get your head around. Begin, do you probably haven't even, have you, get your head around the scale of that loss, your sister, seven children, and the fact that they're still under the rubble? It is, it's just devastating. But you have many more other family members still there, don't you? Your mother, who you say is, is starving, along yes. with family members in Gaza, and then your other family in Rafa. Yes, I have my mother and uh, three uh, brothers, two yeah. sisters. They are starving in the northern part of Gaza. They rely on food cans. Each can costs nowadays $50. So a can of sardines, which I imagine is one of the things that could give some sustenance, that's about £40 at the moment. Yes, one kilo of flour also costs <coughs> the same amount, $50. People wow. are because rushing there's so food. little of it. Yeah, there isn't uh, abundance of food. Israel uh, restricts the entry of food trucks, and um, this is the fifth time that Israeli forces they attack uh, hungry civilians while they are waiting to receive the aid trucks reaching the southern part of Gaza near Al Kuwait roundabout. It's unbelievable that those hungry people not only facing the bombs but they are um, facing the weaponization of hunger. So, I mean, it's hard to imagine that anybody is able to work to earn money to buy a tin of sardines. When you look <sighs> at some of the images of the devastation, it's hard to think of any business that could continue or any kind of work. So, so I know that you must feel powerless in many ways to help, but you have tried to send money, haven't you? Because you can't get food itself in. Thousands of Eddie trucks are stranded in the Egyptian side of Rafah. And Israel uh, stops the delivery of those needed, uh, needed supplies. Um, of course, much of the population, they have no income nowadays. But those lucky ones who have some savings, mm. I managed to send some money. Um, it was very bureaucratic and difficult uh, means. Um, but those ones who don't have the money, they have to follow the parachute, the aid that is dropped, dropped by the parachuting from the air. Mm -hmm. um, some people are um, forced to eat edible grass. Can you imagine? 21st century. Is, is, that, is that true? As we're seeing reports, and sometimes you don't know what to believe when you see stuff online, is that really happening? That, we're, that we're, I've seen pictures of children eating grass and, and, and also animal feed. Is, it, have you heard that? From yes, this is, this is a fact. You know, people had to grind animal feed and birds' uh, grains in order to make a flour and eat hard bread. Mm. It's, it's really okay. hard to digest it. OK, so, so Yusuf, you represent about 300 families mm -hmm. here in the UK and you're now trying to lobby Parliament and the government to create a visa scheme like we did for the Ukrainians. Is that right? That's correct. Um, so we're 100, uh, 300 uh, Palestinian uh, British citizens uh, from Gaza residing in the UK. We have been uh, lobbying and uh, carrying a campaign 
to pressure the UK government, the Home Office, David Cameron's office, to uh, launch a visa scheme to unify with our families. Uh, and also, uh, we are highlighting the complexities between Ukraine and Palestine, but we also would like to highlight that we are abandoned we, as British citizens. And when I'm talking about precisely hypocrisy and double standards, mm. why we Palestinians are um, not allowed to bring our families to safety here, even for temporary means. How, how many people are we talking about? So 300 families. So how, so how many relatives would that be? And what would be the total amount, do you think, of people that you so think... So we are talking about uh, maximum 10,000 visas. Right, which isn't uh, much when you think about the Ukraine. Ukrainian we, we visas. We 270,000. Yeah, that's it's like a small percentage. Uh, otherwise, people would come illegally here. So these are people who are living here as, as British citizens who have family members and would... Would it be all family members? Would it would be what what would what would work to try and get those people you love to safety? So we are talking about um, immediate family members. I'm talking about uh, parents, mm. uh, siblings, mm. uh, spouses. There are children. Um, approximately each family they have between 20 to 50, and um, we would like. To, uh, to them to reunite, to reunite with us because we would like them to escape this genocide. Just, just quickly, so, just before we begin, just quickly, you, you mentioned there that if, if they don't come through visa scheme, they would come here illegally. Are you suggesting that, they, that we see... We, we already have a boat crisis here. Are you suggesting that some of them would attempt that route? If my family are facing genocide, of course they would join me in the UK here. Otherwise, they will come via the boats. Does the UK government want them to come illegally here? Mm. No, that's, an, that's another issue, isn't it? Uh, well, look, uh, uh, just to, to give the government's position, they have said that they are working around the clock to get British nationals who want to leave out of Gaza. Uh, uh, they say they have a team on the ground in Cairo and at the Rafa crossing providing consular assistance, but there are cu currently no plans to establish a separate route for Palestinians to come to the UK. However, any dependents of British citizens who need a visa can apply for one. Hannah Bardell is one of the British MPs who is backing the scheme. Good to speak to you this morning. So uh, morning. the government is yeah. saying at the moment that if, if you have family members there, you can apply for a visa. Why is that not good enough, in your view? And what, why is this new system better? Well, firstly, Kate, I want to recognise the experience of Yusuf and his family and say how desperately sorry I am, as I'm sure most, if not all, parliamentarians are. But words are easy, and frankly, we need action. And we need this scheme, as we have extended it to Ukrainians, to Syrians, to those from Afghanistan who are fleeing conflict. And there are differences. But what we are witnessing and what is unfolding in Gaza is, you know, as the International Court has said, a plausible, a plausible case for genocide, the fastest drop in living standards and poverty and hunger, 70% of those who've been killed are women and children. We need to do, at the very least, the base, give the basic level of humanity and compassion. And that is what this cross-party group of MPs that I've been part of are calling for. This is not so something give extraordinary. Give us a practical sense of exactly how it would work then, that why it's different. You don't have the long drawn out process of applying for a visa, which takes roughly how long normally? And why does this speed it up? Well, how long's a piece of string for those of us who have to deal with the immigration service and represent constituents? It can take it can take a long time. But we all know legislation was passed, for example, for Brexit and other things very, very quickly. When the political will is there and we work together, we can get things done. Mm. And I had a constituent who I had to get out of Gaza, uh, whose family I had to help get out of Gaza. They were British citizens, and her, some of her family are still there. And Yusuf is in exactly the same position. It's devastating and intolerable for people. So the practicalities of this are. We create a visa scheme, we have staff on the ground, but the, but the Foreign Commonwealth Office need to put the resource and the effort into this, and they need to recognise, whilst you know the UK government and, and sadly those in, many in opposition and Labour have been dithering over calling for a ceasefire, similarly, they're not willing to accept uh, giving a visa scheme and creating a visa uh, scheme that will get, get uh, people here. So we, we can do this. There is no doubt in my mind that we have the capacity to do this, and, and particularly in places like Scotland, you know, we need more people to come to our shores. We need more people to come, but Hannah, and it's the right yeah. thing to do. But Hannah Bardell, just quickly, what, what would you say to people though? Say, look, we've, we some people believe we've got a high migration levels already in this country. That the practicalities of housing another even ten thousand people would be difficult, be difficult on towns and cities. What would you say to those people watching today? Think we, we just can't take any more. 
I would say watch the tragedy that is unfolding in Gaza. Watch that people are being buried under rubble, that are having their whole families wiped out, and say, you know, this is the single issue that I have had the most emails on in support of people in Gaza. There is no doubt in my mind that people in Livingston, people across Scotland and across the UK, want to bring people here to be with their families, to then go back, because there's no doubt in my mind the vast majority of people who flee conflict want to go back to their homeland, and that is something that we have consistently called for. The tragedy is there's going to be nothing left of their homeland if countries like the UK don't use yeah. their voice at the UN Security Council. Right. And I accept there are challenges in infrastructure, and there are you know, but just because there are challenges doesn't mean that we should meet okay. those. All right. yeah, I just want to give a, a last word to you, Savannah. Yeah. Very, very strong, good to talk to you this morning as well. Um, you. Yusuf, when did you last hear from the members of family there and... and what do you fear for them? Three months ago, uh, telecommunication lines are bad. They are facing uh, the danger every moment. Every day they wake up unharmed is a miracle. Um, the UK has to play um, a, major, a major role uh, to hold uh, up its responsibility to correct the historical injustice that happened in 1917, Belfort Declaration. And as a British citizen, I feel that we are abandoned. The UK must play uh, a practical role to protect our family members to protect the civilian population in Gaza, to stop mm. sending weapons to Israel. You know, it's not acceptable that 21st century starvation weapon is being used. We would like also the UK government to enable British citizens to sponsor refugees okay. from Gaza. Yusuf. Thank you very much indeed. Yusuf, your, the, the, the thought of your family members still lying under rubble since December is going to stick with me and I think many of our viewers for a long mm. time to come and we hope that fate doesn't come on the rest of your relatives. Thanks very Thank much, you so much for inviting me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, very good to talk to you this morning and thanks to Hannah Bardell as well. Let's take a look at the weather with Laura, who's at Cheltenham.